guys, my name is Joanna, also known as Just Another Flutist, and today we are going to be talking about five more tips for you self-taught flutists out there while I cook chicken wings. Let's go. I'm now going to try to read with my very blind eyes what my first point is going to be. Rhythm. Do not get lazy and not count your rests. This not only includes the large rests that are like multi bars and multi measures, but it also includes eighth rests, quarter rests, half rests, usually the rests that kind of fill up the rest of a bar after a phrase is done. Do not skip those. Now, you're probably wondering like, I'm self-taught. I'm probably not going to play this with an accompanist anytime soon. So why do I need to worry about whether or not I count all the rests correctly? Well, here's the thing. What you're basically doing by not counting all the rests when you play is that you're actually playing an entirely different version of the piece. It's actually fundamentally different without the rests. The rests you want to treat as silent notes. You don't want to treat them as like non-music. It's not. Rests are actually seen as part of music. You can't really appreciate pitches and the notes and the music and the the phrasing without rests. It's like negative space in art. And there's even some artwork out there that uses only negative space to create the image that they're trying to create. Wow, these, so far, these chicken wings are very clean. The other thing about skipping your rests is that it actually throws off your sense of the beat. Our bodies are kind of trained listening to, you know, just even just pop music over and over. We're sort of trained to feel this beat, right? And if you skip, let's say just a random note at the end of a bar, your body is going to feel it. It's gonna feel like it's skipping. So like how we said how rests are basically like notes, but they're silent notes. If you skip a rest, it has the same exact effect where you feel like you're tripping and you start to lose the sense of the beat entirely. So if you play a lot of you know music by yourself, if you study a lot by yourself and you're noticing that you're having a lot of trouble with rhythm, Chances are it may not be because you don't understand the rhythm. It could just be because you're literally just tripping your sense of internal beat off by skipping all these rests. So make sure you don't skip any of those rests. Let's now go for point number two. What did I say here? This is something that I've actually been teaching my students lately because I realized like I, I don't know why it took me this long to figure it out, but it took me a while to articulate how professionals play in what sounds to be a very linear manner. The reason why I use the word linear is because, you know, when a professional is just playing the flute and going to us, it sounds like the airflow is just going right? Especially if you're a self-taught flutist, you're listening to a lot of flute players and it just sounds super linear. So you think to yourself, well, so that means that like, if I play, I should just like find a good tone on my starting note of whatever it is that I'm playing. And then if I just go linearly, like direct the air up and then direct the air down, depending on what the contour of the song is, then it should be fine. But what you'll end up finding is that you'll start with a really good tone and then it'll suddenly just kind of like, go to complete crap and you're like what the heck i started with a good tone why is it just like you know going to complete crap and it's because the feeling of producing good tone on each note does not actually feel linear even if the notes are right next to each other like half step apart it feels really chunky so you feel like even if you're going from like b to a sharp you feel like there's a distinct shift in how the airflow moves not only outside your mouth but also inside your mouth this is a lot of chicken wings by the way like holy crap D do you see that we bought a lot it was on sale. $1.29 a pound. <laughs> Just experiment. I would encourage you to experiment with the Trevor Y tone book. He sort of almost touches on this issue without actually saying it. Whoa, there's a long piece of feather sticking out there. So essentially, even when you are doing like tone development, going from B to A sharp, you're gonna feel more like it's target practice more than just you know, going murmur, it doesn't feel like that. It feels like you're going murr, murr. Basically what I'm saying is that when a professional plays like it doesn't just feel like No, it doesn't. It feels more like It feels like that inside your mouth, but 
it sounds very linear. So there's a disconnect, you know, there's a disconnect between how it sounds versus how it feels. And you need to anticipate that. Now let's move on to my third point. Some notes do not feel like the notes you're looking at and you need to anticipate this. For example, if you're looking at like an A flat, the fingering for an A flat on the flute feels more like a G. There's going to be a conflict in your mind, especially because when you first learn to play the flute and you look at an A, the first type of A that you learn how to play is a natural, which is only like one, two, I'm sorry, my fingers are so gross right now. One, two, and thumb, and then pinky, right? But playing an A flat is one, two, three, G sharp, lever, thumb, pinky. And that feels more like a G than it does an A. And so there can be, again, a bit of a disconnect between what you see and what your fingers actually need to play. As long as you anticipate that, it won't be as bad. But the thing is, if you don't anticipate that at all, that's when you can run into some problems when you're you know, practicing scales or practicing your repertoire. Other notes that are like this are like D flat. D flat feels more like a C, you know, because it is like a C sharp, right? E flats feel more like Ds. They don't feel like Es because, you know, you're not lifting your ring finger on your right hand. I'm not actually feeling the best right now. I can't even figure out left from right. My fourth point kind of expounds on this topic. Learn all of your pitches, like the actual notes, on a keyboard. You have to know what all the white keys are and what all the black keys are. You're probably thinking to yourself, but I'm learning the flute. Why do I have to learn how the piano works? The reason why you need to learn that is because that is the only way to explain what enharmonic notes are. Enharmonic notes simply means that it's a note that can be named in two different ways. In fact, every single note can be named multiple different ways. An A is actually the same as a B double flat. You know, the more common ones are like C flat is a B natural, E sharp is an F natural. And you know, if you don't look at a keyboard, it makes zero sense. So actually, when you say something is sharp or you say something is flat, what you're saying is on the keyboard, it's only one note away. It's a half step. Now between B and C, there's no black key. So that means that B sharp is the same note as C natural because those two notes on the keyboard are right next to each other. Same thing if you go C flat, it just means that it's the note that is right under the C, which is a B because there's no, again, there's no black key between B and C. If you memorize a keyboard, then when you look at your flute music, all of the accidentals will make a lot more sense. I need to quickly rinse this and then I will get right back to talking. No, 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 no. Oh no! Chicken wing down! More chicken wings down. Gotta rinse again. All right, by the way, random cooking advice for you guys. If you're ever baking any kind of like meats and seafood and whatever, pat it dry, okay? Just make sure it's not sopping wet when you put it on your baking sheet. I learned that the hard way. It looks like I have 18 chicken wings. They ain't, no, they're not all gonna fit in here. So we're gonna start with nine of them. I can do math, I swear. Lysol to the rescue. Funny story about this Lysol. When I was up in Vancouver for Christmas, I didn't know it, but I accidentally tracked poop into our car. Yeah, and I was meeting my best friend, Carrie, literally half an hour after I discovered that I tracked poop like everywhere. A true best friend, she did not care that I smelled like poop when I met up with her and she went with me to the drugstore to get them disinfectant wipes. In case you're wondering, I'm doing the exact same recipe that I did like years ago now when I made chicken wings for uh, John and me. John is my boyfriend. I'm just gonna season it very quickly with salt, garlic powder, and pepper. And then, oh, I need some arrowroot flour too. Here we go, uh, arrowroot flour. I'm that Asian, reuse honey bottle and put a different thing inside. Yeah. Do I need oil in this? Maybe a little bit. I'll put a little bit of oil. This is not the healthiest oil. We got, we got pure canola oil because 
we were making chili oil from scratch and making chili oil with avocado oil it tastes good but like it sets into a solid form in the fridge but this doesn't so that's why we ended up getting this but now we have to use up the rest of it mm. I'm gonna season it and keep talking we're actually at our last point already my fifth point here is something that I've been hinting at throughout this entire video so far um, and it's that you want to make sure that you are very I just splashed in a little bit too much oil on one side so we're just going to you know be very uh, not as heavy-handed on the other side okay so the fifth point is mindful anticipation of what you are playing so this includes both sight reading and practicing again when professionals sight read something they just kind of like and they just kind of play it and then you're just kind of left there going like how did you do that like did you already practice this before and they're like uh no that's my first time reading it and you're like a WTF I'm here to tell you that it's not always as easy as how professionals make it look we already have practiced a lot of scales and whatever scales arpeggios you know things like that you know it makes it easier for us to sight read because like we will recognize a the scale then we'll just kind of blast through it we'll we'll recognize the arpeggio and just blast through it but sometimes there there is music that you know they'll throw in a random accidental you know the composer is trying to feel real fancy and whatever and we won't expect it either but what we what we see on the page is like we see that sharp coming up and we already know that that's going to feel weird so what you do is you anticipate the feeling that you are going to force yourself to play a note that your fingers don't want to play. It's that feeling of forcing yourself to do it that a lot of us think is like rudimentary or elementary, um, that, you know, that's not something that professionals do. No, it is totally something professionals do. We do it all the time. It's just that we do it so much that we've gotten used to doing it and we're good at hiding the fact that we're doing it anticipate the feeling of forcing yourself to play some weird notes. So what I'm saying through this whole video actually, oh, I didn't even realize that was the theme of this video until now. Just because it looks effortless does not mean that it is effortless. A professional is actually not that much different from a student. If you're a student watching this, like all the feelings that you have right now of being a student, Professionals still feel. We've just been doing it for so long that we're good at pretending that we don't feel those feelings. That's all. That's kind of the beauty of being a professional. I used to mix all this stuff like in a separate bowl, but now I'm like, let's just do it on the baking sheet itself. Cause then you can wash less dishes. And also because like, this is chicken, so like you need to freaking sterilize everything that it touches or potentially touched so you don't cross contaminate. <laughs> so I actually need to sterilize this entire counter after I'm done here. There we go. So what I'm gonna do after this is actually roll it around in some honey. I'm gonna be real with you guys. I legit looked up my own video in my own files of how I made those honey chicken wings because I forgot my own recipe. <laughs> Does that happen to any of you guys too? Because I know that a lot of you guys who are watching are like, you know, full grown adults too. So I, I think you guys will know what I'm talking about. You ever have those recipes where you're like, man, that was really good. How the heck did I make that? Arranging chicken wings when they're like not cut into pieces is always like the most awkward. I have since become very, very lazy um, and, I, and I no longer cut the chicken wings apart. Like if you're a very traditional Chinese, then you totally would because there's a lot of like skin and fat and, and like a lot of people are like, oh, that's not healthy for you. But <sighs> we is lazy. Let me wash my hands again. All right, we're gonna pop it in here for 25 minutes. Chicken is now in the oven and I am now disinfecting the counter. Thank you for joining me today in my kitchen, actually in my landlord's kitchen because I do not own this place. I hope that was helpful. Let me know in the comments below if there's anything else you self-taught peeps out there want to know about. For those of you who are further along in this flute journey, please write a few of your tips down in the comments below about like how you practice and stuff because yeah, I, like honestly, I feel like 
I'm not the only person that you guys can learn from. We have like a whole community here of like lots of musicians. I know that some of you are actually teachers yourselves too. So if you can put in the comments below some of your best practicing tips, I think everyone will not only appreciate it, but actually enjoy it. And so as usual, if you guys like this video, make sure you give me a big thumbs up and hit subscribe for new videos every Saturday. My last video is over there. And if you want to catch me during the week, my social media networks are down there. But otherwise I will see you guys next week. I put away my other camera and I realized I forgot to say this, but um, about the format of this video. Some of you guys have missed my vlogs. Some of you said that you guys wouldn't mind seeing me make more videos without makeup on. And some of you also wanted me to film somewhere else in the house. So I feel like this video kind of does all of it. It's sort of half vloggy because I'm just kind of cooking and I have no makeup on. And I am in a different part of the house. I'm in the kitchen. If you made it this far into the video and you see this part now, let me know if you like this format of video. I might do it this way sometimes, but not all the time, just to kind of break up the monotony of how I normally do my videos. You know, it makes things uh, more interesting for you guys and also more interesting for me. I hope you like it because I really like talking to you guys like this. It's a lot more informal, which I feel like is the beauty of YouTube anyway.